so we're, we're talking about being cool versus hot. I'm going to stay cool, but I don't mind if you, if you get angry. Well, I'm not going to get angry. I mean, there's okay. nothing, there's nothing to get angry about. Um, I just, I just found, I found the conceptual positions of the book to be, well, generously early 20th century. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. uh, um, and so uh, when I say excoriating, I don't mean that I'm angry. I simply yeah. mean that I have very little good to say about it. Yeah. No, I do want to. I do want to talk about this book, actually, maybe even more now that you want to say bad things about it. Uh, this is something yeah. that I've been struggling with, in fact, um, as an author who also writes reviews of other people's books. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a temptation to only say positive things. Mm -hmm. um, but when you do that, it creates this environment where you hear, as an author, you hear either praise or silence. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a much scarier place to be than a world where you hear praise and uh, excoriation and silence because people haven't read the book, you know? Uh, yeah. You need to be able yeah. to make a distinction between someone who has no opinion and someone who has a negative opinion. Right. Uh, and so I think it's it's more useful for us to put out uh, a negative review every now and then when mm -hmm. we honestly didn't like something. Right. Uh, right. So so let's let's honestly dislike. <laughs> I'm going to show everyone the the cover of the book, which I have as a digital copy. So here it is, Deep World. Uh -huh. Okay. By Cal Newport. Right. Uh, so a little bit of background here. I used deep work in the communication creativity course that Paul and I teach. Uh, I used it in my communication side of the course. And uh, it was that I, I chose it because I found some, some useful stuff in it. Um, and then Paul and I have, well, were trying to put together a schedule where we can talk about these books and make a, a library of videos talking about them. Uh, and then life intervened and the conversation we were planning to have in September is happening in November instead. So it's been a while since either of us have actually read this book. So that's one thing. Uh, but the other thing is over time, our, our opinions have changed. Uh, so Paul, what's your opinion? Well, I don't, I, I don't know that I don't, first of all, I don't know that it's that um, I don't know that it's a question about what's my opinion. Okay. I guess I feel that um, I react to the book in by way of of asking where what his idea of reading is. And um, and and noticing what I, I mean, at the most fundamental level, what I th think is absent from his idea of reading. The first, the first thing I noticed is that I felt like he had a very conventional idea, a very old-fashioned idea, of of reading something. Mm -hmm. And and I guess by old fashioned, I don't mean really old fashioned. I mean, kind of 19th, 20th century sort of idea of reading something, kind of industrial revolution notion of reading. Book begins here, ends here, and you know, that's that's that. And you 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 follow one page after the other. Um, and I thought all through the book, there are these references to concentration, um, eliminating distraction, doing all these kinds of things. And I was so struck by, you know, earlier we talked about Augustine and we talked about 
you know, the tole lege kind of experience and that sort of thing. And that's precisely what is absent here. Mm. One of the things I was always struck with in Augustine's notice of that moment was the fact that he received the message from a child, that it was a child's song, that it was playfulness, um, that, that instigated the randomness of his reading. You know, the, the message was not pick up a Bible and start from Genesis. The message was pick up and read. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything. And, and he did at random. He did at random. Yeah. And, and that was the beginning uh, of, of his reading and a key moment in his conversion. And so it's, I think it's a very, a very telling uh, moment, not just for the randomness of, of, of acquiring what to read, but that the message comes from a child and that the child's message is, is, uh, occurs within the context of something playful. Um, so my first thought is, I'm looking through his book, looking for the playful part. Yeah. And I don't see it. Yeah. Whoa, I did not expect you to, uh, to start talking about St. Augustine. <laughs> I'm catching up a little bit here. Uh, yeah, so do you think that, okay, so you're missing the playfulness. I mean, yeah, so there, there isn't any playfulness there isn't. as far as I remember. In, uh, in deep work. Um, I think instead it's more of a cry for help. Um, not in the way that, that, I mean, we use it uh, sarcastically these days, uh, that phrase, but I think, I think really, I'm remembering the, uh, I think the heart and soul of deep work is where Newport, Newport talks about this uh, video he saw about this guy who makes Viking swords uh, and uh, how he, he forges the sword and he picks it up and looks at it and he's satisfied with the work that he's done. Um, and uh, I think that the, the emotion that goes through the whole book is where can I find that? How can I get that? Mm. And since you're talking about Augustine, uh, Augustine's search in his in his uh, in his confessions is for meaning. He's mm -hmm. you know all of these terrible things happened to me. What meaning can I extract from any of this? Mm -hmm. And the answer to that question is pick up and read. Uh, what, one, uh, one part of it, yeah. Okay. What? Well, okay. And answer. Yeah. Um, and I think it's. I think that. Uh, I mean, it's expecting a lot of of Cal Newport to. Uh, give us the answer of meaning, uh, but yeah, I, no, no, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have expected that. Of my, mm -hmm. I, I kind of don't expect that of, of, of any of anybody author. Because what can we do? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it, it, it's a question that we have to expect of ourselves, but not of others. Mm. Um, okay, uh, but, but. Um, but, and I didn't mean to suggest that, you know, Newport needed to start with Augustine. That's not at all what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. What, what I'm saying is that, you know, I thought of that as I was reading that book and asking myself, you know, where Newport imagined the beginning. Uh -huh. And, um, and, because, and I asked this question because I thought he was clearly suggesting that there were right and wrong ways to be in this movement. And- um, What movement? Uh, in the movement of a, of a reading, of a study. Oh, ah, okay, okay. Work. So and, separate from how one should live one's life, but just yeah, like- Yeah, no, I'm-, okay. I'm because I don't, 
I don't think that's even a proper element of the discussion in a way. It's about deep work, it's not about, it's about looking for meaning, but it is not necessarily about how to live one's life. There are many ways to look for meaning in life and, um, and, and they may not involve deep work. Um, they may involve a million other things. The, the, one of the other things though that I was mm -hmm. struck by was, and he mentions this in terms of the monastic practice. Yeah. I was struck by the solitary nature of his quest. Yeah. And, um, and I, and I think I was um, disinterested by that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I thought, uh, okay. Um, but, but, you know, like there, but not for me, you know, like the song. It's um, important. Uh, we talked about that in our class, actually, but, but finish your thought. Oh, okay. Um, it, it just, I think that it is, and that's why I say it strikes me as an early 20th century, late 19th century book, because uh, it, it belongs to that era when, when, um, when only I have things to say to myself. Yeah. Um, and, huh. I have and, a lot of reactions to that. All right. Well, um, <laughs> I, I, and I, I personally don't work that way. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, I work in teams and mm -hmm. we work together. Yeah. Uh, we have things to say to each other that are important and, and, and sway my opinions and open doors and, and do all those kinds of things. And those things wouldn't happen for me if I weren't in a community and in a team. Um, in fact, I, I, I rarely anymore think of teams uh, in terms other than community. And I always look at the, not only my connectedness to a team, but my team's connectedness to, to their world and, and, and other worlds. It's one of the ways that my world grows. Yeah. Um, and so when I read a work uh, that is, that suggests that it is a certain kind of advice. Yeah. Um, but, but goes in that direction, it, it's, it sparks a disinterest in me. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And, but a use, but a really useful, a really useful disinterest because I'm always asking myself, why does this, why does this not, why is this not provocative for me? Mm -hmm. Why does this, and I think part of the reason is because it seems antithetical to where we are and what we do uh, now. We being? Humanity. Okay. Um, or, or, you know, or that part of humanity that works in the way that we do, um, which is, which is, I think, in a very deep sense, um, a question of membership and team driven and, and, and all of these things.